Hello, welcome to our lesson on ways to measure angles. So we're probably pretty comfortable with measuring angles in degrees, sort of the way that we think about measuring angles. And what the degrees are doing is, is really measuring the rotation between the two rays that are creating the angle. And so hopefully that concept is not new, especially because we've been doing a lot of that in class. Um, but what I want to bring up here are partial degrees. So if we were finding an angle that wasn't exact, so not maybe not an exact 54 degrees, but maybe we approximated an angle at like 54.357 degrees, the, that um, partial part of the degree could obviously be measured in a decimal form, but it can also be measured in minutes and seconds. So when we're talking about partial degrees, these are angle measurements in degrees that aren't exact. We can measure those oops, partial degrees in decimal form, so using decimals, which we've probably seen before, or in maybe something that's new, we can measure them in minutes and seconds. And you might be asking, like, why would we do that? So maybe we can conceptualize something like, don't write this on your notes, but like 54.127, whatever I said, something like this. Like, I know that this is, you know, just a little tiny portion of uh, a degree there, but if I want to be a little more precise or try to conceptualize it a little bit better, the idea of converting to minutes and seconds to me makes sense. So what we're going to look at, um, it, it's sort of like a clock, okay? If I said, you know, the difference between 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock, like obviously there's a lot happening in there, we want to be specific, like I'm not going to say it's 4.2 o'clock, like what does that mean, right? What does that decimal form mean? So we know that in the clock we break the hours into minutes and then we can further break those into seconds so we can be really precise and know approximately where we're looking. So it's similar with angles measured in degrees. And in the same way there are 60 minutes in an hour, there are um, there are going to be 60 minutes in a degree. Sorry, my train of thought. I lost that for a second. So in the same way there are 60 minutes in an hour, there are 60 minutes in one degree. So again, think of it just like a clock. Each one of those hours on the clock has 60 minutes. Every degree in our rotation, the 360 degree rotation, contains 60 minutes. Okay, so there are, oops, pen on, and I turn my race around again. There are 60 minutes in one degree. All right, now what about seconds? So again, we can take our hour, break it into minutes, we could take the minutes and then break it into seconds. We know that there are 60 seconds in every minute, so how many seconds would be in one degree? So if there were 60 minutes, we would multiply by 60 seconds in each one of those minutes to know that there are 3,600 seconds in one degree. So just like one hour has 60 minutes and one hour has 3,600 seconds, we know that one degree has 60 minutes and one degree has 3,600 seconds. And so what we're going to try to do is go back and forth between um, angles measured in degrees with partial degrees. We're going to go back and forth between the decimal form of that partial degree and the minute seconds form of that partial degree. And all we're doing when we're converting, anytime we're converting, is multiplying and dividing. Uh, for instance, maybe let me just take it to my scratch paper. We're probably pretty familiar with like, let's say we had 12 feet and I wanted to convert that to inches. Now we know what to do here. Uh, because we're familiar with this um, unit of measurement. We know that there are 12 inches. Maybe I shouldn't have used 12. Let's be distinct. Uh, let's say 5 feet. If I wanted to convert to inches, I know there are 12 inches in every one of those feet, so I know I would just multiply this by 12 and say, okay, this 5 feet would be equal to 60 inches. Or in reverse, if I had 36 inches and I said, oh, convert that to feet, Again, because there are 12 inches in every one of those feet, this time I would have to divide by the 12, and that would uh, tell me that I have 3 feet, right? So when I'm converting, in this particular instance, it's either multiply by 12 or divide by 12. So it's going to be really similar when we're converting um, between our 
our decimals and our minutes and degrees. It's going to be a process of either multiplying or dividing and basically by 60 or it could be um, the 3600 because that comes into play too. So before we go to the conversions, let's just make sure we have um, some notation established. Okay, so uh, and then I threw something in here too I should probably mention. So if we're going to be converting between decimals and then I put DMS here, you probably figured out what that stands for, but that's degrees, minutes, and seconds. So degrees, we know we use the little circle for um, the unit of measure there. And then minutes, we're going to use like a prime, kind of a backslash looking little guy, and then seconds gets that twice. So we have our degrees with the little circle, we have minutes with the one dash or one prime, and then we have seconds with two of them. Okay, so those are um, the notations for those. Now let's go back to uh, not just notation, but some of the things that are equivalent. So what I said one second ago is that if uh, we have one degree, that one degree is the same as 60 minutes. So we can use the notation that way. But if I was looking at that in reverse, if I wanted to say one minute was equal to what, right? One minute is then one sixtieth of the degree. So you can see, uh, maybe I should move this here. If I have one degree being 60 minutes, that is basically multiplying by 60, right? Or we would say that one minute is one sixtieth of a degree. And again, we can see that that is taking the one and dividing by 60 to figure out that measurement, right? So one degree we can say is 60 minutes or, oh, I don't want to delete that. One degree is 60 minutes, or we could say one minute is one sixtieth of a degree. And both of those are helpful depending on which way we want to we go. And then for seconds, we said um, that there are going to be, uh, or we could say one degree has a total of 3,600 seconds, or we could say that one second is one thirty six hundredth of a degree. So one second is one out of the thirty six hundred total seconds involved in the degree. And again, you can see that we are just multiplying by thirty six hundred to go here or dividing by the thirty six hundred to go here. OK, so it's multiplying and dividing when we're doing our conversions, just like when we're going from inches to feet or feet to inches. Uh, but it's just a new process and we're not as familiar with these conversions as we are with like feet and inches. So let's try this out. OK, let's start with we have this measurement. So we would read this as 12 degrees, 42 minutes, 38 seconds. OK, so again, think about the clock. You know exactly how much of your degree now we're looking at. That's a pretty good chunk of the degree because 42 minutes, 38 seconds would be a pretty good chunk of the clock, right? So we're going to be definitely past like a 0.5 mark, um, but let's let's try to figure it out for certain here. Okay, so 12 degrees, that part of it isn't going to change because we're still in degrees here. We're just changing the minutes and seconds to decimal. So I know. Did I just delete something? I did. Son of a gun. Okay, sorry. I gotta be careful with my buttons. So 12 degrees is gonna stay. And the 42 minutes that I want to change to degrees, remember that 42 minutes? Um, and I could put, I don't know, there, there are different ways to do this notation here. I'm going to go ahead and put a plus sign because ultimately we're going to end up putting this all together to make one decimal. So the 42 minutes, that is 42 minutes out of the 60 minutes total. So I'm going to take the 42 and divide it by 60, and that's going to give me the degree measurement there. And then the same thing for seconds. So the 38 seconds that are given to me, that's out of the 3,600 total seconds that are there. So if I um, divide by 60 and then divide by 3,600, then each of those, the minutes and the seconds, is now in degrees. So now I just need to input this into the calculator. And the calculator is going to tell me, and I just put it all in at once here, 12 plus 42 over 60 
plus 38 divided by 3600 is going to be 12.71 ish. And so I should probably approximate approximate this. We're going to say about, what did I say again? 12.71 degrees. So 12 degrees, 42 minutes, 38 seconds is about 12.71 in decimal form. Okay, hopefully not bad and, and hopefully it makes sense that 0 0.71 again being uh, more than about half, right? Because 42 minutes on the clock is definitely more than, it's almost three quarters, right? Okay, so there's one direction. Again, just dividing by the 60 for the minutes and then dividing by the 3600 for the seconds. I think going the other direction is a little bit harder, um, but just my opinion. So let's try this out. Again, the 85, I don't need to worry about that. What I need to do is figure out what's going on with um, the like, like the 0.263 part of that. So first, what I would do is figure out how many minutes is that. So the other direction we were dividing by 60, let's multiply by 60 in this direction. So I have 85 degrees plus I have this 0 0.263 uh, degrees. And if I multiply that by 60, then I can turn it into minutes. Okay, so that's going to be times 60 minutes. So it's like this percentage of one of our uh, degrees, which is, we know, one minute. So it's multiplying to go this direction. The other way you can think about this, and I don't want to uh, deviate too far here, but I have 0.263 of a degree now, right? And I know that one degree, oops, the other way. Uh, yeah, sorry, one degree is 60 minutes, and maybe you've seen conversions kind of done in this format before, but if I divide by the one degree, then the degrees cancel, and then I multiply by the 60, and then I'm in minutes, okay? So I'm multiplying by 60, unless that already made sense, and I'm going on the tangent for nothing here. So let's do this. The calculator is going to give me this part of it. So 0.263. If I multiply by 60, that ends up being 15.78 minutes. So right now we're at 85 degrees, plus we're at 15.78 minutes. But I don't want to leave the 0.78 minutes in there. That 0.78 of a minute, I can take and figure out how many seconds that is. So again, think about what's happening here. I have 0.78 of a minute. And I know that one minute has 60 seconds. And so that's what I'm trying to get to is seconds, right? So if I multiply by 60 again, then I can get rid of the minutes and be left with seconds. So I'm not going to mess with the 80 or the 85. I'm not going to mess with the 15. I already know that's 15 minutes. But I'm going to take that partial minute and turn it into seconds. So now that 0.78. Uh, of a minute is going to get multiplied by 60 and that's going to make it seconds. I'm going to get rid of all this because I'm just clogging up my paper here. Alright, so then calculator. If I take 0.78 and multiply by 60, then I end up with 46.8, so I'd probably round that to 47 because I don't want to go past my seconds. No, I forgot, 47. So this is going to be 85 degrees, 15 minutes, and 47 seconds. And obviously still a little bit of rounding in there, but that's going to be our closest conversion. And there it is. So the 3600, we're really only going to be using that when we're dividing. Um, when we're going in this direction, it's going to be just multiplying by 60 with each time we branch out. All right, hopefully that makes sense. So let's look at this one. This time we're just add to, asked to add these two angles, and it would work just as you would imagine. You're going to take your 28 degrees, 35 minutes, and you're going to add the 63 degrees and 52 minutes by putting the minutes together, putting the degrees together. So if I add here, this is going to be 87 minutes. And then if I add over here, let's see, I'd have to carry the 1, so that's going to be 91 degrees. 
Um, the problem, and maybe you see the problem, is that 87 minutes, that's um, more than, oh my gosh, I can't, more than one degree. I mistook because this is, oh man, I thought I turned my eraser on. I'm sorry, I got a little hung up on this not being lined up nicely. Okay, so I have 91 degrees, 87 minutes, but the problem is that 87 minutes has more than one degree in it. So remember, um, it takes 60 of those to make one. So that would be like, if I added, uh, I don't know, an hour and 20 minutes, and then another two hours and 45 minutes, right? We're looking at three hours and 65 minutes, but there's an hour in there. So that's really four hours and five minutes. Same kind of concept that's happening here. So that 87 minutes, I can take out one of my degrees because there's 60 of them in there. So if I subtract those 60 out, that means I'm going to actually be adding one here. So take the 60 minutes away to give me one more degree. So the final answer should be 92 degrees and then 27 minutes. Okay, and so sometimes we have to carry over and then sometimes we have to borrow, like on this one. I have 180 degrees, I'm trying to subtract 117 degrees in 29 minutes. So first, let's take this 180. If I borrowed, like I could make that 179 degrees and then take one of the degrees over and make it 60 minutes. So 179 degrees in 60 minutes, that's still 180 degrees total. And then from that, I could subtract my 117 and then 29 minutes. All right, so 29 taken away from the 60 is going to leave me 31. So there's 31 minutes here. And then if I subtract the 117 from the 79, that's going to leave me 62. So 62 degrees and 31 minutes would be my result. 62 degrees, 31 minutes. I feel like I write nice and then sometimes it just looks like garbage. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so those are our degrees, minutes, and seconds, or decimals. Those are for partial degrees. And again, degrees being the concept we know. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for now, I know some of you have asked me in class about radians. So let's talk about them here. Radians are another very common way to measure angles. We just don't tend to use it because our brains don't think in radians. Um, and they are slightly different in that the degree measures Again, the rotation between the rays that are creating the angle. The radians are measuring angles based on what we call intercepted arcs. And maybe you're familiar with what an arc is. Uh, but an arc is just a part of the circumference of the circle. And circumference is another word for perimeter. It's the distance around the outside of the circle. So radian measure is, again, based on intercepted arcs. So for example, I got a circle here. It doesn't matter if it's units or whatever the circle is. And I, I just stuck an angle in there, OK? When we're measuring the angle in degrees um, here, let's say theta degrees, whatever, that it's that uh, rotation from the one ray to the other ray. It doesn't matter how far out you go on um, those two rays of your angle, that rotation amount is the same. So when we're measuring degrees, again, it's about how far have we rotated up or down if it was negative between those two rays. When we're measuring the angle in radians, what we're looking at is the length of the intercepted arc. So we're talking about radian measure only in an angle that's intercepting a circle. And the intercepted arc for this angle is going to be this portion right here. So this would be uh, a measure in radians. So this is an intercepted um, arc. So an arc, again, being part of the circumference, that's just part of the whole perimeter of the circle, intercepted because it's contained between the two rays that are making that angle. So when we're measuring in radians, it's more about the, the length of that arc, or arc length. And that can vary depending on the radius. So if I wanted the intercepted arc for a circle that was in here, obviously that length is going to be a lot smaller than this one. 
or if I put a circle way out here, if I just continued these rays and my circle was way out here, that length that intercepted arc is going to be a lot bigger as well. And that's something we're going to build on in the next lesson. But for now, the degrees measure the amount of rotation and the radians are more measuring the arc length. Okay, so I want to get rid of that and that. All right, now the um, arc length being part of the circumference, circumference is important. Uh, do you remember how to measure or calculate the circumference of a circle? There are two formulas. One of them, which is going to come in handy in the unit circle, um, is the circumference can be found by multiplying 2 times pi times the radius of that circle. So if we're looking at the unit circle, which is super helpful place to start, we know that our unit circle has a radius of 1. So if I plugged in a radius of 1 into our formula, that means the circumference would just be 2 pi. Okay, so that's a biggie right there, the circumference being 2 pi. So if we went all the way around the circle, this full distance around, we're going 2 pi radians. If I went this much of it, and this intercepted arc would be, I don't know, however much, depends on what that, um, what that angle is, okay? So the whole distance around is 2 pi, just like we say a full complete rotation, a full angle, a full um, turn would be 360 degrees. In the same way we know that, we want to program into our brains that that 360 is the same as 2 pi radians. So a full rotation not only measures, that is my highlighter, 360 degrees, we could also say a full rotation, a full circle, the full circumference of that circle is 2 pi radians. Now that's specifically in the unit circle, but this will carry forward, okay? So let's try to find some other of our special angles in the unit circle based off knowing that a full circle is 2 pi. So here, all right, we got the unit circle and I cut it up on purpose into two different circles here. Let's focus on this first one. Hopefully you recognize these angles, this being a zero or 360 degree angle here, right in between zero and 90 degrees. We know this one's gonna be 45. And then here I have the other uh, angles that have 45 degree reference angles. This one would be 180 minus the 45, which is 135. 180 here, 180 plus the 45 would be 225, plus another 45 is 270 here, but we knew that one, and then plus another 45, this would be 315 degrees, okay? So those are our angles in degrees, but if I wanted to measure them now in radians, there is an equivalent radian measure for each of these, and hopefully we can see it. So we said in radians, well this would still be uh, zero radian measure here, or now it's a full rotation. Instead of going a full 360 to get there, I can say that I'm going two pi radians to get there. So if a full rotation is two pi, right, if all the way around is two pi, it should make sense that from here to here, that's half of my full rotation, is one pi. So at 180 degrees, we are also looking at an angle measure that is pi radians. So those two are the same, okay? 180 degrees and pi radians, or 360 degrees and two pi radians. Those are two equivalent angle measurements. One's in degrees, one's in radians, okay? Now let's focus on the one pi on the top half of this unit circle. This is one pi. And what are those 45 degree angles doing, those 45, 45 triangles doing? They're cutting that one pi into four equal sections. So this first 45 degree angle here is the cutoff for one fourth of that pi. So we wanna think about the 45, 45, 90s as fourths, okay? So this is technically one fourth of the pi one-fourth of the one pi that we see in the top. So we could also, uh, if we multiplied one-fourth by pi, pi, just call that pi over four. So that 45 degree angle, we could also call a pi over four radian angle. And that would be one-fourth of the pi. This would be two-fourths of the pi. 
or we could just call that 2 pi over 4, or could uh, we could reduce that to just pi over 2. This would be 3 fourths of the pi, or again we could call that 3 pi over 4. And this would be 4 fourths of the pi, but what's 4 fourths again? That's just going to be 1. Now think about what's happening as we move past a pi. We're, we're not starting over because we have just another pi that we're adding on. So if we added another fourth, this mark right here, 225 degrees, that's 5 fourths of the pi. Or again, 5 pi over 4. And then this would be 6 fourths of the pi. And 6 fourths of the pi, or 6 pi over 4, would reduce to 3 pi over 2. This would be another fourth, so that's 7 fourths of the pi. So again, 7 fourths pi, or you could call that 7 pi over 4. And then we go full circle and we get 8 fourths of the pi, or 8 fourths reduces to 2 pi. Okay? So we have those 45s cutting into fourths. So in the same way I could count by 45 degrees, I can count by fourths as we go around the unit circle with those. Now if we're looking at the 30, 60, 90s, so again, here's our 0 or 360 degrees. Here's our 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree. This would be 120, 150, 180, 210, 240, again 270. This is 300, this is 330, and then we are back full 360, okay? So again, if we're going to radians now instead of degrees, so this is still zero radians or now a full circle two pi radians. This is still half of the circle, so one pi. So let's focus again on the one pi. If I'm looking at these 30 degree um, gaps in between these, these rotations, 30 degree rotations, splitting that one pi into one, two, three, four, five, six equal pieces. So each one of those angles represents an additional, additional sixth of the pi. So at 30 degrees, we are at one sixth of the pi, or pi over six radians. This would be two sixths of the pi, or two pi over six, but that reduces to pi over three. This would be 3 sixths of the pi, but there's our half again, so pi over 2, 1 pi over 2. This would be 4 sixths of the pi, that's going to reduce to 2 thirds, so 2 pi over 3. This would be 5 sixths, or again 5 pi over 6. And then we have 6 sixths at pi, but 6 sixths is just 1 pi. This would be 7 sixths of the pi, this would be 8 sixths of the pi, and that reduces to four thirds, or four pi over three. This would be nine sixths of the pi, but that reduces to three pi over two. Same thing we had over here, just looking at it in another form. This would be ten sixths, and that reduces to five pi over three. And this would be eleven sixths, or eleven pi over six. Okay, so however you want to look at them, if you like to pine the top of the fraction or out in front, I, it's, I go back and forth, so I want you to be comfortable with it each way, but there it is. So when we're looking at our unit circle and trying to find our radian measures versus our degree measures, think about the 45, 45, 90s as fourths of the pi, and you can kind of count in fourths, and then think about the 30, 60s creating the sixths, cuts the pies into six. So every one of those 60 degree markers, or 30 degree markers, I mean, um, is one six, and you can just kind of count around by six the way I did, or all of those 45s are fourths, and you can count by fours all the way around. Now I like to use the 180 and the 360, so like if I was trying to quickly identify where is five pi over four, I would start here and be like, well, I know that's one, right? That's four fourths, so then one more fourth to get to five fourths. Or if it was uh, three fourths, okay, again, I would go with my four fourths and subtract one, and there's my three fourths. And I kind of do the same thing with sixths, okay? If I knew it was um, 11 sixths, well, I know that this is going to be 12 sixths, so that's going to be two, so I just got to go one sixth below to get to 11 sixths. 
So the more uh, you practice with this, the more comfortable you get with being able to do that kind of thing. But for now, hopefully you at least understand the concept. Okay. Now, these are some direct what is happening? Oh, there we go. My paper wouldn't scroll. Sorry, I got stuck. Uh, direct um, equivalent measures here. So if I said, what is 45 degrees in radians? There it is. It's going to be on your unit circle, and we'll fill a nice one out later. Um, so 45 degrees is pi over 4 radians. Not too bad to make that conversion because it's on the unit circle. But not every angle is going to be a special angle, right? So like, what if I wanted to know the radian measure for a 50 degree angle that's not sitting there on the unit circle? So how do we make the conversion? Well, we make the conversion uh, the same way we were converting decimals to minutes and seconds, um, and the same way we were converting here with feet and inches. So we know this one, but again, I want to show you what I was showing you a little bit earlier with the degrees, minutes, and seconds. So if I had, go back to my 12 feet, and I said make it inches, I can set up this little box here to do a quick multiplier divide whatever is going to happen. I know that there are, uh, if I want it to be inches, that there are 12 inches in one foot. So if I multiply this by 12, I know I'm going to get 144 inches, right? So just the setup here is helpful. I know without having to do this setup that I'm multiplying by 12, but if I use what I call a unit fraction in this little chart, a unit fraction is two different uh, or unique values that actually have measurements that have the same value. So 12 inches and one foot, they're different measurements, but they have the same value. If I multiply by a unit fraction, I can make a conversion. As long as my units are on opposite sides of the fraction here, then those are going to cancel. So if I said to take uh, 12, let's go, I don't know. 5 feet. I, I, took, I got rid of 12 before and I put it back in there. 5, no, let's do this one. Sorry. 36 inches, and I said convert it to feet. I could say, okay, again, there are 12 inches in 1 foot. So I know in this case I have to divide by 12. Now, technically, I could multiply the top to get 36 and then divide by the bottom, and then I'm going to still get my same correct answer of 3. But just organizationally, you can see what's happening here. Now, we know how to do these because we're used to going between feet and inches. Well, hopefully. But it's the same concept with radians and degrees. What we need is a unit fraction. So, like 12 inches in one foot is a unit fraction. Or one degree being 60 minutes, technically, could be a unit fraction. Or, I don't know so many different things. We could say uh, 365 days in one year would be a unit fraction if we were trying to convert from days to years or vice versa. So this is going from inches to feet or vice versa, going from degrees to minutes or vice versa. Okay. What we're going to try to do is go from degrees to radians. So our unit fraction could be any two that are the same. Like we know that two pi radians is exactly the same as 360 degrees. So I could use that as a unit fraction to make a conversion. But since that reduces to 1 pi radian equal to 180 degrees, that's going to be the unit fraction I use. Now, which way I use it depends on what I'm converting to. Uh, it could that I be that I use pi radians over 180, or it could be that I use 180 degrees over pi radians, and we'll see both versions. But this is going to be the unit fraction that we use to make our conversions. So a unit fraction that has both of the measurements we're looking at, the one we have and the one we get to, or vice versa. So any angle, how did I get to my highlighter? Uh, can be converted from degrees to radians or vice versa since 1 pi radian is equal to 180 degrees. A unit fraction of those two values can be used to convert. If we're going to go from degrees to radians, so if I have degrees and I want to go to radians, then what I'm going to have to do is multiply by the pi over 180 so that those degrees are going to cancel. So multiply by pi over 180. And if I want to go from radians to degrees, so if I started with radians here, 
and I wanted to get to degrees of my answer, then I need the radians to go away. So I'd have to multiply by 180 over pi for those radians to go. So I'm going to multiply by 180 degrees over pi in that case. And you'll see it. So let's try. Uh, so like 330, I probably wouldn't do any work to convert this because I know 330 degrees is on my unit circle. I know 330 degrees right here is going to be 11 pi over 6 radians, so it doesn't take any work, but just so we can practice the process. Here's how the work is going to look. If I want to go from degrees to radians, again, I need my degrees to go away, so I need those units on opposite sides of the fraction. So that's telling me to multiply by 180 degrees, um, or pi radians, over 180 degrees. Okay, so we're technically going to divide by the 180. So those units, again, these units are going to cancel, and these will be the units that I'm left with. So how this works, again, we're going to multiply. On the top, we have 330 pi radians, and on the bottom, we have 180. Uh, and so this is reducible. If you wanted to also just reduce over here, you could do that. But just so you can see, it's multiplication across the top and division by whatever we have on the bottom. So if I'm going to reduce this, definitely I can reduce the zeros. And I can see that 3 is going to go in. So 3 is going to go in here 11 times, and it's going to go in here 6 times. And there it is, the same value we got from our unit circle. So this is going to be equal to 11 pi over 6 radians. And I wish we had a little symbol for radians, but we don't. So you can write it out, and sometimes I capitalize, and sometimes I don't, and sometimes I abbreviate, and sometimes I don't. So it's kind of like whatever goes there. All right, so 50 degrees is one where we'd have to make the conversion because it's not on the unit circle. So I make my little t-chart. Again, I want 180 degrees to be down here, so my degrees are going to cancel. And that means pi radians is going to have to go here. So let's go ahead and do some reducing. Uh, or maybe not. Let's so I can give myself some space. So I'm looking at 50 pi radians divided by 180. Uh, no more degrees, those canceled. So if I reduce, I can get rid of these zeros, and 5 and 18 don't reduce. So this final answer is going to be 5 pi over 18 radians. And I think this would be a good place for you to pause the video and try this out. If you don't want to, though, here we go. Let me change it back to red. Why does this not work for me? Okay, so again, I'm going to multiply by pi radians over 180 degrees. My degrees are going to cancel. So what I'm looking at, unreduced, is 175 pi over <coughs> 180 radians. Obviously reducible. 5 is going to go into both of these. And I don't feel like screwing this up. So 175 divided by 5 is going to be 35. Pretty sure I said change to green. Okay, so this is going to be 35. And then how many times does 5 go into 180? Obviously that's going to be 36. I don't need a calculator for that. So that's going to be 36. And that won't reduce any further. So final answer on this one is going to be 35 pi over 36 radians. And it should make sense that that's pretty close to 1, because 175 degrees is pretty close to 180 degrees, which is where 1 pi is. All right, now let's go in reverse. So pi over 2 radians, again, this is not one that I would do any work to convert. I know that pi over 2, that's a half of a pi. Half of my, my or this is my 1 pi here, half of that, that's 90 degrees. That's a big one, comes up a lot, probably one we should commit to memory, but if we want to see the work. This time, when I draw my little chart out here, I'm going to go ahead and put the pi over 2 um, as a fraction, where the pi over 2, um, that, that fraction bar is already there, I'm just going to extend that, okay? So what I want to do is multiply now by not pi over 180, but 180 degrees over pi radians, so we can get the pi's to cancel. Okay, once those are gone, we're no longer in radians. So these are going to cancel, and all we're left with is 180 degrees divided by 2, which means we're at 90 degrees, which is exactly what we saw happen on our unit circle. And technically, this is 
the word radians is in here. I'm putting the word radians here. I just I don't want to write it because I already know that the pi is attached to the radians and those are going to cancel. But I guess if we're being thorough, we should. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to take my 5 pi over 6. And I'm just going to extend that fraction. And I'm going to put a pi down here to get rid of it. And then I put my 180 degrees here because those two are equal. And now I can see that these are going to cancel. That means radians are gone. And so now we have on the top of the fraction, 5 times 180, but then we're going to end up dividing by the 6, and I can see that's reducible, so I'm going to reduce here. 6 is going to go in here once, and it's going to go in here 30 times. So 5 times the 30 on the top is going to be 150, and it's just 1 on the bottom, so divided by 1 it wouldn't change it. So 150 degrees, and that should make sense, because I believe we had 5 pi over 6 up here. Uh, where are we? 5... Sorry, my thing keeps freezing. Okay, 5 pi over 6 radians, we see that happening right here at 150 degrees. Sorry, it looks like I'm, it's not me, it's my screen is freezing. All right, we got one more. 9 pi over 2 radians, that's like 4 and a half pi, so I know I'm going to be going around the circle multiple times, so I should have a pretty large degree measure here, but let's figure out what it is. Oh my gosh, paper's being weird. So 9 pi over 2, let's extend that. Again, I'm going to put pi here, put 180 degrees here. Pi's are going to go away. And I know I can reduce more. 2 goes in here once, and it goes in here 90 times. So when we multiply out the 9 times the 90, that's 810 degrees. And again, that makes sense. 4.5 pi. So if I went 2 pi, that's 360. Another 2 pi, that's 4 pi, or uh, 400 and... no. Uh, 720, sorry, and then we're going to go another half pi, so I said four and a half pies, right? So the two pi, another two pi, and then a, a half, uh, half a pi. So this is 360 degrees, another 360 degrees, and then a half of a pi, that's another 90 degrees, and if you add all that up, what do we get? 810 degrees. Okay, so hopefully that answer makes sense. And hopefully this process isn't too complicated, although I might have overcomplicated with my too much talking. <laughs> okay, and you should have enough to get going, but as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Until next time, take care.